being in that house and being in the mess and hearing the stories of my parents' struggles was, was hard. And I needed to give myself space to to reflect and not get just caught up in my own emotions. This is the CUNY cast. I'm Joe Torello. Charm Circle is a deeply personal documentary by filmmaker Nira Bernstein, a Queens College alumna. Bernstein's award-winning film depicts the struggles of her eccentric family as they navigate the trials of mental illness and the fractured emotional landscape of their lives. She shot the film over six years and combines contemporary footage with old home videos to create a brave and multi-layered family portrait. She boldly confronts the difficulties of familial bonds that, that are often hidden, and she does it with honesty, love, and even a wry sense of humor. Bernstein is one of Filmmaker Magazine's 25 new faces of independent film, and Charm Circle has been hailed at numerous film festivals around the world. This Saturday, it will be screened at the Museum of the Moving Image in Long Island City as part of the 12th annual Queen's World Film Festival. Nira Bernstein, welcome to the CUNYCast. Hi, thanks for having me. Could you tell us a little bit about what it was like to make a movie about your family in such an honest yet nuanced way? Yes, I mean, I felt uh, that was the only way I could make this film is to be honest and direct while at the same time build compassion at the same time. Um, because that was the experience I was going through making this film, was that these are difficult situations, I don't know how to fix them, but I want to be here and figure out a way to become closer to my family um, and to understand them as opposed to maybe judging the issues. Which, you know, without giving too much away, there's this really big mess in the house that I grew up in that my parents live in. and, and, and um, It's, you know, an experience after having this movie play festivals this last year and a half, I've realized is more common than one might think. And it's the story behind closed doors that we don't usually see on camera. Right. Um, as much as the movie is about your family, it's about a particular part of Queens, New York, your native borough and mine. Um, why does the location of the film play such an important part in it? And was that intentional? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the name of the film is Charm Circle, which is the neighborhood a much smaller neighborhood in, in Flushing, Queens, um, New York, where I grew up and where the house is. And um, the house itself is a character in the movie, like I just described. It, it's quite a mess in there. It, it has 30 years of history in there. Um, and, you know, if you see the film, you, you, you learn more towards the end why it is so important and, like, um, how a house, you know, has a part in making a home. And uh, I just think that's really important um, part of exploring the film. And then on top of it, um, anytime we branch out of the house, because we're often just in the house, we're in the neighborhood, we're on the streets in Queens, it is just such a contrast. But at the same time, I think my parents are sort of those quintessential New Yorkers, these eccentric characters that we know and hear about, and here they are, um, front and center. And so it's a really kind of a love letter to um, the um, unique personalities of lifelong New Yorkers, which my parents are as well, um, living their lives. Could you ever picture your parents living someplace other than New York, or maybe even other than Queens? I mean, it's it's very hard to think about that. And, uh, you know, they've been living in Queens. My mom grew up on Long Island, but my dad grew up in Queens, and they both went to Queens College, too. And uh, it's just kind of like... That's, that's, you know, you can live your whole life in Queens and never go into the city. And that's not the case of my parents. But um, it's just one of those places that it's so, um, it's, it's not like a suburb, you know, far out of town. It's not like upstate or, it's definitely part of the city, but it has its own unique flavor. Right. Um, the film vividly intersects this, you know, contemporary footage with home movies, which gives an almost historical presentation of your family and the home that they live in. Can you talk about what it was like to see those 
home movies again for the first time in a while and edit them together. I imagine it was a very emotional experience. And how did you prepare for that? And, and who shot those images? Well, a lot of the footage was shot by my dad. Um, he got up like a prosumer high eight tape camera. Um, and uh, sometimes I would film and that would be often when I'm filming or sometimes he was doing selfie videos before anyone else was and he would set up the camera and just shoot. And when I started making this film, I didn't think I was gonna include home videos. I knew they existed, but I didn't think um, it was gonna be a part of the film. I thought I was gonna make a straight, I thought I was gonna make a straight observational film about my parents in present day. But a producer recommended I take a look at them. And I was like, okay. And when I did, I, it really was a very startling, emotional picture that I saw emerging and a greater responsibility to tell the story more fully because now I can. And um, seeing, like, you know, my mom's struggles with mental um, illness and, you know, my dad coping with that and my older sister's developmental disabilities kind of all coming um, into reality, into existence. And it's just very emotional and powerful to relive one's childhood that way because it just was happening to me. I, I didn't, I don't have the um, ability to step back and now I can. Right. It, it seems almost like um, you grew up with a camera pointed at you. And I, I don't mean to make that sound like, it, you know, like some kind of threat, but it's you're living your life as a child. The family's living its life and it's being documented in real time. Do you think that's what led to being a filmmaker or at, now, that you, now that you are a filmmaker, I should say, and you're going through this footage, did you stop to think like you, you, you have this sort of relationship with cameras and you know docu documents? It's, it's pretty funny, but no. I, and I did shoot a bunch of the home videos as well, I mean, especially when my dad's in it and stuff, and I could see myself shooting in a way that was storytelling. But that, I'm like eight years old about when I started doing that. I didn't figure out till I was like 19 in Queens College that I wanted to be a filmmaker. And not until I saw this footage did I realize I was doing that kind of creative stuff already. Like it, it's just um, really interesting. But I felt like this was another way to collaborate with my family besides them just being on camera was that I felt like my dad was like passing that baton on to me. So he was giving me his right. footage and I can incorporate it into this film. Because what was really um, incredible about these videos that he captured was it wasn't just, you know, the, the usual events like the happy birthdays and all that and holidays. It was these moments of, of struggle. And he used the camera to help process that. Right. It's almost like he was doc it's almost those moments where in the family setting someone might be like, get that camera out of my face. Like, this is not the moment. But those moments are there. Yeah, and I, I don't remember ever that experience happening where, like, get the camera out. And he didn't do it so much. There really isn't that much footage. Um, and, and, you know, I guess in, in a way, like, my parents, for the most part, were the same way about having the camera when I shot. They were just, okay, let's, let's do this. Um, you said you wanted the film to look at these emotional difficulties that were present in the life of your family, but you wanted viewers to see real people, not just individuals struggling. Um, instead, you wanted to show you know, re real three-dimensional people, and how did you accomplish that? Well, I mean, I hope that you know whoever sees the film feels that way. Um, but for me, it was important to show everybody from their own point of view. So letting them express the way they feel about what's going on um, and, and not me just, you know, carving out the story I want to tell. I wanted everyone to feel like their voice was being heard. And I think that's, you know, I, the way I can create an environment where it's not, it's not easy to judge or um, to just take one side. Um, and yeah, and that was really trying to find that right balance between everybody from f to five people in the film. Uh, speaking about balance, um, the movie is series of the topics are in, in this ter emotional terrain that's being explored. Th there is a, there's a lightheartedness to the film. Um, 
in, do you think that did you worry that some viewers might confuse um, the, the sort of wry sense of humor as, as insensitive and how did you balance that um, sure yeah it, it's, there's a big difference between laughing with and laughing at and I definitely didn't want the latter um, Fred Armisen, who's an executive producer on the film, uh, you know, amazing comedian, uh, uh, he, I was lucky enough to show him the film, and he signed on, and uh, he really helped me, you know, hone in on how to balance that tone and humor and not to lose it. And I think it all starts with the opening of the film where you have to establish trust, you know, with your audience, that I have the agency to tell the story, and that it's a team making the film, not just behind the camera, but in front of the camera. And I hope people feel that way. Because early on, um, making this film, I did get stuff like, oh, this might be exploitative. You know, um, clearly, uh, members of your family are struggling with mental health issues. Um, you shouldn't be making a movie like this. And my feeling was that if we can't, you know, figure out a way to show people with mental health issues, we're just keeping them, you know, out of the conversation and not giving them agency to tell their stories. And I don't think that's any more fair because that's what creates all the stigma is this, we're not able to talk about it. It, it, To go that route would almost to make people struggling with mental illness invisible. And then how are they seen then if right exactly I mean they're kept on the margins of society you know for a reason and and I get it it's not always easy to confront these things I mean that's why the movie um, is hard for some people but like the reason why I think the film works is because of the lightheartedness and my parents triumph of human spirit which is one of the awards we won at Middlebury Film Festival um, because there is this kind of uh, sweetness and hope and sense of humor that just runs in the family and just makes it so much more palpable and and loving and yeah it's, it's now, nice you showed the movie it, it played in rome and in an italian festival yes, what was it, the reaction there um well it played the rome international documentary festival recently it was an incredibly warm race I, I people came up after me and said they want to give me hugs and tell them that they love my parents and there we also won best international film as well as the student jury award for best international film and I thought that was really cool because um, these college students who want to be making films were like, this is the film that we want to recognize. And I think um, if when I was 18 or so to see a movie like this, I imagine what kind of impact that would have on me to know that films like this can be made and also that um, you can feel less alone by recognizing um, people in movies. And that's a really powerful feeling. I also think it's quite telling that college students who sometimes, you know, you read the papers, there's certain sensitivities that they have, and they look at things differently than, say, different generations, embrace the movie. I yeah. I that says something. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really great. And um, also at Middlebury Film Festival um, in Vermont, there was, you know, an older crowd there, and it was just as warmly embraced. It's just... Um, people see people they know and it just moves them and it gives them I don't know some some warm cuddly feelings inside and I love that you know was there ever a point when you were filming the movie and you're looking through the camera and of course you're seeing your family and you think you thought maybe I can't do this anymore this is too much I gotta stop yeah there was definitely moments this took six years from my started shooting not including the home videos from you know 30 years ago um to finish the film and I shot you know you know sometimes I would shoot a few days in a row and sometimes it'd be a few months between shoots and that was really important for me to process what was going on because being in that house and being in the mess and hearing the stories of my parents struggles was was hard and I needed to give myself space to to reflect and not get just caught up in my own emotions. And sometimes, yeah, I was also really pissed off and angry. There's conflict in my family. And, um, you know, for me, I just needed to step away for a bit. Um, your parents went to Queens College, uh, which is discussed in the film. And 
not that we want to give too much away, but you also went to Queens College, which is where you developed your love for cinema and filmmaking. Can you discuss what your experience at Queens was like? Well, I graduated high school, and um, you know, usually I went to yeshiva. Everyone goes to Israel for a year, but I decided to go right to school um, or university. And I um, mean, you know, what was cool about Queens was that once I realized I wanted to become a filmmaker because I saw some films, I'm like, I want to do that. I was already a media studies major, already taking media studies. So I, already, I just started grabbing whatever classes I could that was related to film. And because I'm in Queens, I was able to find internships and take, you know, production assisting jobs and just, you know, make it work and like learn in every way I could um, to make these films. And I felt really um, held by Queens College. One of my professors, Zoe Beloff, she was teaching some graduate level classes in the arts program. And she let me take those classes I was able to take classes I wouldn't normally have to because she knew how serious I was about pursuing this. Um, did you always want to be a filmmaker? Uh, what kind of films inspired you the most and what was your earliest film going experience? Um, well when I was like a kid I wanted to be a judge. Okay. <laughs> but I, I didn't really, but as I got older I think I even maybe took an LSAT or something. Um, I uh, didn't really want to be in that world. Um, and I, I guess, and then I, I saw Donnie Darko, and I was just like, I want to do that. I want to make movies that I have to, like, watch over and over again and, and that make me think and, like, both um, allow you to escape into another world but also deeply connects on an emotional level. And, and stay with you. And I just thought, what a great challenge because I feel like I'm never gonna, there's always gonna be another movie to make. And I'm just lucky that I found that like early in life and that I still enjoy doing it so much. It's not work to me because I enjoy it so much. Um, what's next for you? Uh, I, I believe you're working on a feature film. What can you tell us about it? And is it something completely different than Charm Circle? Um, well, I you can't go into too much detail, but I am working on documentary and narrative, like fiction films. And um, I think they're all sort of connected to Charm Circle. I think I'm always driven by personal stories um, and finding the emotional heart to them. I think that's really important. And also in documentary, to always know who's the one telling the story. So... Yeah, I'm working on, on both kinds of films, and I just want to keep challenging myself to make new things. Do you see yourself going forward, like, toggling back and forth between fictional films and nonfiction? Like, like you need both? Yeah, I think so. I think it's good to switch it up. Um, Charm Circle was, you know, a profoundly overwhelming experience to make. And while I don't think this next doc that I'll be making is, is quite that, um, you know, it, it's important to do work, I think, that moves you or that scares you even um, because I think that's that's the impact you can give to the audience as well, and they can experience that too. Okay. Thank you, Nira. Thank you for having me. Come see the film November 5th at the Museum of the Moving Image. I'll be there. <laughs>